All right, Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala, Great Millstone, Louisiana Saints, coming back at you with another live Shabbat lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shabbat Shalom. So, today we're just going to go into a topic that's a uh, very somber, very sobering, but it's something that's well well needed for the body. You know, we, we prophesy about the downfall of Babylon. We prophesy about the death of two thirds. We prophesy about mass destruction. And so what does that mean? There, there's gonna come a time very soon and it's already starting where a lot of brothers in the faith, uh, a lot of family members of brothers in the faith are gonna start dropping dead and, and just falling by the wayside. And it's very important that you have an understanding of death. You have an understanding of the most High's relationship with death and so you don't bug out you know as it tells you in isaiah 33 and 6 wisdom and knowledge is going to be the stability of our times and that wisdom and knowledge comes from the scriptures so we're just going to start with uh, uh the first thessalonians 4. Uh, this is first thessalonians 4. furthermore then we be beseech you brethren and exhort you by the lord yahweh that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and please the most high so ye would abound more and more right so that you can abound more and more knowing how to walk in the faith knowing how to please the most high we get that from these precepts we understand everything that we need to know to prepare us for that evil day and that includes death that includes the understanding of what happens after your spirit leaves your body so you don't get bugged out when you see these things because again we we prophesy heavily about the death of the two-thirds but also you know that you have the death of the prophets you have martyrs you have to understand how this this process works so you don't bug out man you can jump down to you want to say something here no nah, I, I just uh sneezed okay come on. you can jump down to verse 13 Bible for sure. uh first thessalonians uh 4 and 13 but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope right and that's the whole point right there others have no hope we have a hope of the world to come. We have a hope that all of the family members that we lose, all the brothers in the truth, as well as uh, family members that aren't in the truth, we have a hope that we're gonna see them again. We have a hope that the next time we see them, they're either gonna be in a chariot, if they're a man of the Lord, they're gonna be in a chariot, which we're gonna get that in the scriptures. But also if, they, if it's a family member that's a two third, if they were scoffing against the word, or if they're a family member that you know may, may not have necessarily believed, but they weren't scoffing and coming up against you, you're going to see them in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to see them in, in their right state of mind. You're going to see them in their perfection because Israel is going to be made perfect very soon. And death should remind you of these things. Death shouldn't bug you out. Death shouldn't make you panic. Death should make you think, okay, this person actually was preserved from the evil to come. Matter of fact, before we go down in that uh, Thessalonians, you can give me that, that Isaiah 57. Guys, uh, Isaiah 57 verse 1, the righteous perish and no man live to heart. And merciful men are taken away, not considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Right. Not considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. A lot of people in this world, they don't consider that when the Most High puts someone to death, especially if they die in their sleep or if they pass in a coma or if they go, you know, by some some random quick like like that. People in the world think, oh, man, that, so and so died before their time. Why, why Lord, why would you do that? But we in the truth, we consider the things to come. That person was actually uh, receiving mercy from the evil to come because there, there is nothing but evil prepared for this place. All right, you have the gas prices getting higher and higher. Food is becoming more scarce. The scriptures tell you that to die of famine is even worse than getting shot or stabbed. You have a lot of people that are going to starve to death. So when you see someone die in a so-called quick manner, that's actually mercy from the Father. And you should know that being in this truth. You should look at death as mercy, not as you know some horrible you know just being bugged out that's a that's the response to someone that doesn't have hope okay, read that again in uh, thessalonians uh verse 13. Come on, come on. uh this is first thessalonians 4 and 13. but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope right apostle paul is saying i would not have you ignorant brethren the word ignorant means to not know and we know pertaining to the scriptures the most high gave us the, the actual science the actual knowledge of what happens when you die so apostle paul says 
I will not have you ignorant brethren and to not be sorrowful as them which have no hope. We, we have a lively hope. We have hope in the kingdom of heaven. We have hope in the salvation of Israel. And we have hope that we're going to be reunited with everyone that we lose on this side. Even, uh, I don't know if you're still holding that, Matthew, but not only are we going to be united with the family members we lost, we're going to have an abundance of, of even more family. It tells you in Isaiah 60 that one man is going to have a thousand children, man. Uh, you're, going to, you're going to have more family than you know what to do with. So I got keep the, going on that Thessalonians. Oh, you want the Thessalonians? Uh, you you holding the Matthew? Yeah, I, got, I still got the Matthew. Oh, you, you can bring it out. You can bring it out. Whatever uh, precepts your brother's got. Con, this is Matthew 19, and I'm going to start at 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily. I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life but many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first right and the key point there is shall receive a hundredfold that's just one of the many many benefits of serving the lord whatever you lose you're going to receive a hundredfold you lose a job you lose a house you lose your children all right brothers you know the struggle with child support and things of that, uh, that, that you know, excuse me things of that nature going back to the curses you know uh our families will be torn apart you know, your wife might have an evil eye towards you. Don't don't even sweat that, man. In the kingdom, you'll, you'll have a hundred wives, thousand children, man. So, if you lose family members, you, you have to keep pushing. Don't don't let death make you bitter and turn you against the Lord, turn you against the brotherhood, or make you feel like, you know, woe is me. You know, everything that happens to us, you know, is these are these are not things that are uncommon to man. These are things that that are happening to all of us, and very soon, every man of the Lord. Is going to be faced with mass death. Everything we've been prophesying is going to happen. So you can't act surprised when it happens. Like, oh, I didn't know the Lord's about to kill millions of people. That's that's all we've been preaching, man. You, uh, you know, these are things you have to prepare your mind for. If I, if I can add real quick, I, like you said, we're going to get them back. But the most beautiful part is that we're going to get them all back in their right mind. God. But everything is going to be perfect. Then we ain't got to worry about the wickedness and you know the stupidity of our family members. You know, and so on. Like everything is going to be beautiful and perfect in that kingdom. I brought this out. We are those men. Hey, about to add. I was talking to the brother Raya earlier, and we was talking about some of the like the similarities of the things. Is like what, what, what was it we was thinking about? <laughs> what's going to happen? Like God. it's like we've been talking about this all this all this time. So nothing really should come to a shock. It's like what we thought. We just was gonna be talking forever, like nothing was gonna come to pass. All right, <laughs> these words are, are manifesting, man. And we knew the the scriptures will manifest itself. We just gotta be willing if we willing to, you know, be walking in that day and accepting what's coming, man. Cause the words, uh, you know, the words of the book is bound. They're gonna happen, man. You gotta do it. Yeah, to, you know, only only a man. The scripture tell you right here that I'm holding. In uh, Sirach 41, only a man that feels that debt is bitter, that's only a man that's living in his possessions. You know, you live in, you live in, you live in for your house, your car, your woman, these things in the world. So you're gonna find debt bitter. You're gonna find you. Hey, we don't. It is what it is, man. We 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 are up here accepting anything the Lord brings to us, man. You know, cold heart. It, it just is what it is. You no, know, because we we have, but we do. We say that to say this. We do have uh, the opportunity of hope. You know, we have we 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 hoping the Lord that we receive salvation. We doing we doing a whole lot better than than most out here, than the majority, the bulk of the people out here, especially the Israelites, man. The average, I'm, the average everyday common Israelites, we doing way better than them. At least we putting our, our right foot forward. But uh, you can break it down. Uh, I'm a wide. This is a uh, uh, the book of. Um, Sirach 41, and I'm, I'm going to read down to three. From, I'm going to start at one and read down to three. It says, O debt, 
how bitter is the remembrance of thee to a man that liveth at rest in his in his possessions unto the man that has nothing to vex him and that has prosperity in all things yea unto him that is yet able to receive me it's his whole debt go ahead yeah so the first verse is telling you you know death is bitter to someone that's basically in the world when you read Sirach 41 and 1 it's basically describing the exact opposite of a man of the lord someone that's not vexed by anything someone that's resting in their possession someone that's comfortable in this world oh how bitter is death to that person because they're enjoying their so-called life yahweh said you have to hate your own life to follow him so if you hate your own life and which as we're going to get in corinthians it's better to be with the lord you're, you're going to have the exact opposite uh perspective as someone that just loves everything about this current life like death has to be the worst thing ever if you're enjoying every second of life but if you <laughs> that's you got it huh? hey that's why yahweh came and took what the sting of death away because again that, that sting to certain people like you say is better because they're dying what they're dying they're they trying to save their life all yeah. right that's why that gonna be that much more bitter all right because they're trying to hold on to something that's inevitable like you have to die if you're not being saved that's what i don't think people is understanding man all right if you're not getting saved by the lord the opposite end of that is death, man all right that's why you always try to come and take that sting away from it man you got it bro yeah, and a lot of our people are dead men walking dead women walking they don't even know scripture says uh you if you living in pleasure you dead while you live you're yeah. already dead you just you, you just animated basically you're not alive but you're animated you can keep going on that that's all right yeah verse two says oh dead acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy and unto him who <laughs> strength feeling, that is now in the last age and is vexed with all things mm. all right and to him that departed and has lost patience fear not the sentence of death remember them that has been before thee and that cometh after for this is the sentence of the lord over all flesh right the scripture says fear not the death the sentence of death and that's the that's the mentality you're supposed to have as a man of the lord that that uh second maccabee seven spirit that spirit of you know whatever the lord has prepared for me if this is how how it's meant for my story to end I'm going to accept it manfully i'm not going to you know squeal like a like a goat i'm going to take it like a sheep which is to just accept the the judgment of the lord and understanding what happens after that you're going to be present with the lord it's not like your, your spirit's going to just disappear and poof and you don't exist anymore these, these people have all sorts of weird ideologies you know you you go to hell and satan is poking you and you're on fire forever all of this madness when you come to the truth one of the reasons that we tear down strongholds and and go into these wayward philosophies it's not just to you know sound deep or anything like this so you can understand that all of these philosophies are set up to increase your fear of death to increase your fear of this world you're supposed to fear your hawabashem your shy, and once you do that nothing else should should really shake you or, or make you panic or bug out um yeah, uh, you, i gotta appreciate the back up what you're saying because ultimately, ultimately too jacob's trouble these things are happening even that it's not it's not even for it's not even for the righteous man it's right. just for the wicked and this and this scripture backs up what i'm aware i was saying and what i just said uh in the verse over from uh city right 41 in, in uh in, in, in uh chapter 40 i'm gonna start at about um i'm gonna start at about i'm gonna start at uh five the point is in um the point is in nine nine ten and eleven it says wrath, envy, uh, trouble, and uh, inquiringness, fear, and debt, and anger, and strife, in in the times of rest unto the unto his bed, his night sleep, do it change his knowledge. A little or nothing is at is his rest, and after afterward he is in his sleep, as it as in a day of keeping watch, trouble, and the vision of his heart, as if he were escaped out of a battle when all is safe he wicked and marveled that he feared was nothing it says uh such things happen unto all flesh but man and beast and that is sevenfold more unto sinners and this is the point everything else right here is the point it says death 
and bloodshed, strife in the end, sword, calamity, famine, tribulations, and the scorch. These things are created for the wicked. All right. And for their sake came the flood. All things that are of the earth shall return again to the earth, and and that which is of the waters do it return into the sea. You got it, you got it. God. And then uh, in verse eight it says, Such things happen unto all flesh, but sevenfold more to sinners. So, like the elder said, these great judgments, they're really prepared for the two thirds, they're pre prepared for the heathen. So when you see somebody die in their sleep, when you see someone pass calmly. When you see someone have a real quick death, that's mercy from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It's going to be sevenfold for sinners. It's going to be look, look, these scoffers, these people that came up against the gospel. They're going to be the the people that you see on the news with these horrific deaths. You know, brothers just posted that that situation that happened down here with that chick. Man, that was a, a horrible, just a horrible way to go. Man, she got shot up and her body was still, she, her spirit was still in her body. Man, she didn't she didn't pass quietly in her sleep. These are the judgments that are prepared for scorners. And just demonic people, man. Hey, I was gonna say too, real quick, real quick, Doc, to add to you, you with that guy you seen walking on the sidewalk, you seen he was in that spirit created for vengeance. This nigga was walking, taking his time yeah. to do his shit, man. Yeah. In broad daylight. But go ahead, Doc. Yeah, these are the judgments that are prepared for scorners, man. The most high is putting a vicious spirit on these people. So seeing someone a family member die in their sleep, that shouldn't bug you out. That should you should scripture should come in your mind, okay. That's that's actually mercy. That's that's you know the Lord wasn't making an example out of this person. If you can get a Kayal, if you can give me wisdom of Solomon 17 and 12 real quick, because once you understand the truth, you're like, like I was saying earlier, you you have these people that believe in these different philosophies that cause them to fear uh death, they fear Satan, they fear ghoul, ghouls and goblins, they fear Halloween, they, they fear ghosts and all sorts of things because they don't have any understanding. You mind if I get you one real quick on, on, to back up what you said how uh, by us understanding this truth and preaching it we're breaking down these strongholds and mm -hmm. these different philosophies that 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 the that esau has built up to get people afraid of death and all these other heathens and to back up what you said a little bit earlier Ka uh kaya how yahweh shai took away the sting of death hey first by what giving us this understanding of the scriptures to know that if we lose family members or lose our lives hey as long as we endure, we're going to receive it a hundredfold. And then when Yahweh Shai returns, and if we're of that number, get those immortal bodies, and then the rest of the rest of the nation of Israel is going to come back through us immortal. But but this is a uh, Hebrews chapter two. I'm gonna start at fourteen. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself, speaking of Yahweh Shai, likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him. That had power of death that is the devil here's the point in verse 15 and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage yeah all our lives man we subject to bondage which really we're we're prisoners of hope and going back to that that first thessalonians we're not like those in the world that have no hope being a prisoner of hope is better than being a prisoner of angola it's better than being a prisoner of rikers island we're prisoners of of the hope to come of the world that's going to follow this one so you you're marching towards towards faith towards that mark anything that happens uh as a result of that on your walk it, it shouldn't throw you off your trail you should keep moving forward as a good soldier and anything other than that is is really well as a brother's going to read in wisdom of solomon that's just fear working in your mind you got it Art. all right uh what version was started 12 and where 17 and 12. Is wisdom of Solomon 17 and verse 12. The for fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason offered. Right. And that word succors basically means support or help. So reason offers you support and help in your mind of things to come. And fear is a betraying of that. Fear is basically you casting aside all reason and logic, casting aside the things that you learn. And now you actually believe that the things in your mind, the what ifs, the possibilities, that's actually worse than reality, which isn't the case. Your idea of, of death and the afterlife that you get from the Catholic Church, that's far worse than what, what actually takes place. What actually takes place is your spirit goes back to the Father and you're at rest. You're at total peace. All right. The wicked, the righteous, they all go to one place and they're, they're calm there. 
They're at rest. Oh, you can read 13. And the expectation from within being less count of the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. Right. The things that, that cause fear, you actually, you're tormented more by the things in your own mind. So death, for example, should should put you at peace. It should calm you. But your your imagination of what what's going to happen in the afterlife, that's tormenting you more than death itself. You're tormented by your own mind. Just random thoughts and ideologies that the so-called white man put in your head have bugged our people out. You know, we, we didn't always uh, panic at death. That's something that's like, like really a new thing for our people, you know? I got something to back you up real fast with that. Okay. This is a Sirach 28, and I'm gonna start at 21. Sirach 28 and 21, it says, the debt thereof is an evil debt. The grave is better than it. It should not be. It should not have rule over them that fear Yahweh. Neither said they be buried with the flame thereof, such as to say the Lord shall fall in it, and shall burn, and shall burn in them, and not be quenched. It shall be sent unto them as a lion, and devour them as a leopard. Right, and that's that's these these philosophies. That uh, turn our people away from the Lord. It says when you turn away from the Lord, that's that's when death is really like like a problem, man. Death, dying in your sleep, dying in you know, even if, like I said, these quick deaths. You might have a a so-called stray bullet, which there's no such thing. But when you get taken out real quick and painlessly, man, that's mercy. But when you're when you're tortured, when you're just brutally suffering, and you're not in the truth at all, you're not suffering for righteousness' sake. You're just suffering because you love this world, and the Lord is torturing you, man. That's 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 judgment, and there's there's no other way of looking at it. Yeah, but the point was in 22 when it says it should not have rule over them that fear the Most High, because we understand what that is. Time. All right, we're taking the role, we're taking the place of our ancient forefathers. All right, our ancient foremothers in them. They understood. You read these scriptures, man. You understood that the men and the people back then understood reincarnation. They understood what that that meant. They knew where they were going at too. You know, going back to uh, Peter, I believe, I believe it's uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, something like that, with Peter. Peter so Peter talked about the third heaven, right? Peter talked about the spirit world, how it was. He called it paradise, man, right? So when you have a person die that you know, family members, they go to, they go to paradise. They're not, they're not, hey, you know, Apostle Tahar said a long time ago, they're not, they're not crying to come back to this bitch, I can tell you that. They actually, they actually, they actually, you know, aggravating the Lord to, to help you, man. Lord, oh Lord, you know, help them out, man. But your family members and friends, whoever, they're not, they're not trying to come back down here, man. You got it out. Yeah, it's just like, uh, what was it, Saul? He woke up, Samuel. He's like, why'd yeah, you wake why me you up, man? Huh? Why'd you wake <laughs> me up? Like, he wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm glad to be back. It's good to be back on the earth and you know have joint pain you know it's good to be hungry and it, nah man your spirit is totally you're in paradise all right uh you can get a while we on the subject you can get that second corinthians out yeah i think that's it's second corinthians yeah that's it that's it second corinthians one and read down you want me to get that oh you wanted to get one i was gonna get five uh i was i was talking about i was talking about second corinthians 12 one you gonna get five Gone. Yeah, just read down and get the whole, you know. Nah, he's talking about chapter five. Right? Oh, talking my about bad. I was talking about 12, whenever you're ready for it. Gone. We could we could start at the five. Okay. Twelve. You got to collide. It's Second Corinthians chapter five and one. It says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of your house. A house not made of hands, eternal in the heavens. Right, we have an earthly tap. We have a, a, a heavenly tabernacle that's not built with hands, man. We have a a spiritual body, just like the Most High. His spiritual body is described in the Book of Daniel. Yahweh is a spiritual body. We're we're actually spirits that are that are in chains of darkness. This flesh, these are chains of darkness. We're not meant to have this state forever. The scriptures describe this as a low estate. So when you return to your first estate. That's not that's not a bad thing. That's just gonna tell you. Keep going. 
For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we lock it, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of the life. Right. And we know that being being naked goes into uh, having shame, but there's the actual clothing of righteousness. The scriptures speak about putting on a double garment of righteousness. In the kingdom, man, we're not going to ever sin again. And you don't sin when you're with the Father. You don't sin when you're out of this flesh. I right? know there's nobody in the spiritual realm committing to idolatry, adultery, murder. <laughs> None of that. Exists. that. That's all down here, man, in hell. For you out. Okay, you got it out. Something quick. There's uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 7. It says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. And like the brother was going into, hey, when we leave this earthly tabernacle, when we die and return back unto the Father, we're not sinning no more. You know, the brothers went into it. Hey, when you go back into the spirit world, it's a, it's a paradise, man. Oh. You know, and I just want to quickly hit that right quick. But you want me yeah. back in five? Yeah, that's a beautiful point. I, you got it. If I, if I could back them up right quick, quick precept. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. A good name is better than a precious ornament. In the day of death, the day of one's birth. That's right. So, yeah. you know, therefore, let us know, like, man, death is not not what, what people actually think it is, man. It's it's, it's beautiful to be at peace. It's, you know, but, hey, if I could say, Job cursed the day that he was born. Uh -huh. All right, hey, the Job knew that being alive in this in this sinful flesh. All right, it brought torment upon you. It brought torment upon every man's soul. All right, so he cursed the day he was born. I'm actually holding that one. Go ahead, bro. Run, yeah, Run, it. It. Run, it. Run it. This is uh, Job chapter 3. I'm going to start at 11. Why died I not from the womb? That's right. Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? That's why. why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breasts that I should suck? For now, should I have lain still and been quiet, I should have slept, then had I been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth, which build desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as in hidden, untimely birth, I had not been, as infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together, they hear not the voice of the oppressor, the small and greater there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery and life unto the bitter in soul. Okay. It says there the weary be at rest, both the small and greater there. Everyone's in the spirit world and they're all at rest there. None of them are clamoring to get back to America. You know, please Lord, send me down so I can just see, you know, the, the finals. Please, Lord, let me just let me just hear that Kendrick Lamar album. Like no, that nobody's pining away to be back in the flesh. Once you out of these these chains of darkness, man, you you actually free. You got it up. Hey, like it's saying Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes three. You know the earth is the place of judgment, right? right? And if if the earth is the place of judgment. And you giving your judgment in heaven, there's no need for you to act out your judgment in heaven. I right? like the brother's been going into this this whole lesson, it's paradise, you know, in, in the heavens, but I just wanted to make that point. Um hey, hey, real quick to prove, you know, just what the brother said, man. Who you know died in the heavens. Come on, come on. Huh? There's no record of that. There's no nothing of nothing. Like, there's no nothing saying that someone died in the heavens. Only thing bring forth debt is sin. Sin, bro. So it's telling you clearly, like, they don't sin there. They don't go off. They don't, you don't have sex. You don't do, you don't do, like you said, you, in your celestial body, you can't do the things in your terrestrial body, man. But the Lord is going to, that's why it's going to be what when the men 
of the Lord do come back down, and we we gonna have the celestial blended with the terrestrial, man. Extra terrestrial. Right? Yeah, we're gonna be extraterrestrial. Yeah, we're gonna be extra extraterrestrial. Not On like Earth. the green headed bugs they talk. Oh, the extraterrestrial. Yeah. No, you gonna see men with beards, nine foot tall, ten foot tall, man. On Earth, carrying judgment out. With select being celestial and terrestrial beings simultaneously, man. Come on, man. Indeed. You got it, bro. But nobody died in the heaven. Last we recall, I don't. There's no record of that. Yeah, the scriptures say on earth as it is in heaven. So if, if it's perfect order up there, and the kingdom is going to be perfect order down here, it is what it is. That's right. Stop. Let me get back in that second current. Come on. Keep going. Uh, this verse, verse five. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same. They is Yahweh, who also had given us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Right. And that word earnest means down payment or pledge. So if we have this gospel, which is the earnest of the spirit, it says, therefore, we are confident, which confident means with faith knowing that while we are at home in the body we are absent from the lord so those of us that are in the truth those of us that have the, the name of the lord the understanding the will the prophecies we know that right now you know we're we're in basically absent from the lord meaning even though the lord's with us we're physically down here we're not up in the spirit world yet but we we have an understanding of the spirit world as the brother just read in Job, that the weary cease from rest cease, cease from troubling they're at rest and we know that, and we have a hope of, of going back to the Father. You got it? And if I could just make a point, it said being confident, and on the flip side of that, hey, that's why the men of the Lord wouldn't, they wouldn't stress about dying. You know, they knew exactly where they were going. They had confidence with that. They had faith in that. And they, they was aware of reincarnation, just that's like right. the elders, Yakana spoke about, when those, those men knew you know, when they would go rest with their fathers, when David, you know, particular men was like, you know, bury me with my father. They knew that they had a point in time. It even explains right. that in Job. Yeah, it says in Job 14 that, oh, you know, uh, uh, Job 19 as well, that the Lord had appointed me a day and, and to call me back, man, from my death. And he said, Job was like, I not waited for it because I knew that it would what? Come around, man. Let's just believe it's Job, uh, what, 19, uh, or is he the 14? It's one of them that he appointed me a day and called him back, man. But this, real quick, to go into what I'm saying too. So, Rock 14 and 17, it says, All flesh wax it old as a garment. For the covenant from the beginning is, Thou shalt die to death. As of the green leaves on a thick tree, some fall and some grow. So is the generation of flesh and blood. One coming to an end and another is born. See, we know, you know, you know, people die. We reincarnated. We coming back. We funnel back through. You know, we understand that, you know, what reincarnation is. It means re means back. You know, carnation means what? In the flesh, man. So the flesh, you coming back through the flesh, man. All right. Through, as uh, Solomon said, and what that is, uh, a wisdom of Solomon 7, you know, uh, and I believe in one when he said, um, you know, every man has the same interest in life. Ten, ten, uh, you know, ten months compacted in blood, you know, from the, um, huh? Yeah. Oh, he said, uh, I think that's with Messiah in seven and one, right? When he speak yeah, about Messiah in seven. Yeah. yeah, he fall, you know, he, you know, he come at like a birth of every man. You know, he, he, he fall to the earth and crying. All right. You know, he swaddled and everything like that. Because we have to understand in the, the covenant of the grave, man. All right? There's a covenant of the grave. We get it. Right. You know, it's in First Corinthians back and forth. You know, make a point? Yeah, a precept, too. All right, it says, every work rotted and consumed away, and the work of death shall go without. But it says, uh, so is the generation of flesh and blood. One coming to an end and another is born. It's going to always be a it's going reincarnation ain't, ain't going you know it's up 
for Elam when they get their judgment, man. You know, they ain't coming back. You know? <laughs> you got it, Ash. You got it, bro. Telling me, uh... Yeah. Yeah, there you go. This is one of my favorites. This is uh, Second Edgers uh, 4. And I'm going to start about uh, I'm going to start at 33. It says, Then I answered and said, How and when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore are our years few and evil? And he said unto me, saying, Do not thou haste above the Most High. For thy haste is in vain to, to be above him, for thou hast much exceeded it. It says, Did not the soul uh, uh, did not the souls also of the righteous ask questions of these things in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh what cometh the fruit of the flood of our reward? And unto and it said, And unto these things Uriel the archangel gave him answer and said, Even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for, for he has weighed the world in the balance. It says, By measures had he measured the times, and by number has he numbered the times, and do it not move nor stir them until the until my bad, until the said measure be fulfilled. All right, and it says, Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearage rule, even we all are filled of him in piety, in piety, I'm saying it part wrong. In, 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 in piety, I'm probably saying it wrong. Impious, that's it. Impious. Impious, and for our sake, preadventure, and preadventure it is. That the flood of the righteous are not fulfilled, not filled because of the sins of them that dwell upon the earth. And that's the point. All right. Everything else is the point. So he answered me and said, Go thy way to a woman with child and ask of her when she has fulfilled her nine months, if her womb may keep the birth any longer within her. Then then said I, No, no, Lord, that cannot that can she not and he said unto me in the grave the chamber of souls are like a womb of a woman for like as a woman that uh prevail it make it haste to escape the necessaries of the necessities necessities necessity yeah. the necessities of the travail even so do these places haste to deliver those things that are committed unto them yeah. Huh. Yeah. So the spirit world, one of the terms for it is chamber of souls. It's like a revolving door. You have people that that get sent up to the spirit world. You have people that are coming back down. And you know, Brother Kaya brings out all the time. The Most High likened his judgment unto a ring. It's like a constant revolving door of judgment, and you know, just a, a, a replenishing of the earth, as it tells you in the Psalms. Let me get that real quick. Hey, and even in that, you you had grabbed that Job Amalai. I got it for you. That 14. Yeah, let me read it for you real quick. This uh Job 14. I'm gonna start at 13. Start at 10. Start start at 10. At 10. Yeah. Come on, come on. Verse 10. But man dieth and wasteth the way. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? Question there mark. shouldn't be no question mark after that. Because <laughs> the, the contrary to proper belief in the world, when a man died, he like that's it, he gone. He ain't never coming back. It shouldn't even be a question mark. All right, it said when man died and wasted away, yea, man give it up the ghost, and where is he? Why is the question mark? Go ahead, Doc. Yeah, and they get that from they get that also from um wisdom of Solomon in the second Ooh. chapter. Yeah. To the wicked. You know, yeah. the wicked the wicked have taught people in the world that you die and you're gone forever. Yeah, right? the wicked have taught because he has he has he has a vain a vain mind, you know, a vile mind. He don't have no hope, he don't have no faith. So he he, he can't see the spirit world, he can't see the afterlife. No, it's called a reason, man. You know, I got, I got one to back there, too. I got a cold, man. See, you know. bring, bring yours out real quick, Kyle, so you could, you could finish in that 14 real quick. Come on, come on. It's uh, second Maccabees 7 and uh, 
I mean, 13 and 14. It says, now, when this man was dead, also they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. And it's the point. So when he was ready to die, he said, thus, it is good being put to death by men to look for hope from the Most High to be raised up again by him. But as for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection to life. Yeah, because they, at that time, and that's and that's spiritual because it's prophetic. You ain't when you when y'all get when you know E or E or whatever when he get put out the way, he ain't coming back, man. All right, he's not you not coming back, partner. All right, so <laughs> you know it's prophetic. Doing way in the Maccabees time, he telling them you ain't got no resurrection to life, man. And according to the scriptures, and Obadiah, you gonna be put out the way, and you ain't coming back. Hey, jump to jump to 21 to 23. This is even a woman, man. Even their mother, their mother understood a new reincarnation, man. Those seven sons of Maccabees, man. All right. right. This, uh, verse this, 21. This, these are tokens, these are tokens and lessons for us to uh to, to actually put in our minds, man. All right. We have hope, we have a resurrection coming to us, man. If we even if we even get touched, that we you know. Because you know the Lord, I bring it out all the time, man. We bring out the bad things that's going to happen. We have to bring out. We have to push also the good things, man. We also have to push, you know, the uh, the hope that we do have, man. Right. All right. And our hope, the Lord, the Lord, there's gonna be men that's not gonna even taste of that, man. They're gonna be men. It don't make no sense for the Lord to give us all. I say it all the time. It don't make a sense for the Lord to give us all this knowledge, man. Put us, put us on the highways and byways, preaching so proudly and boldly, man, in his name, to destroy us, man. It don't make no sense. It just don't. No, but go ahead. I... All right. This second Maccabees 7 and 21 says, Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits, and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath or, nor life. Hey, I thought about that one Saturday. We should have brought yeah. that one Saturday, man. God. All right, cut, cut you damn women, but go, go ahead, brother. <laughs> neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you, but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Yeah, man. The Israelite woman understood reincarnation. She she took it more manfully than a lot of so-called men. But yeah, they, they, they don't form the members. The Most High does that, which we, we just went into that. But the point is that the Most High is going to put the, the breath in us again. We're going to be on the earth again, as it tells you in Job. Which you know, Don't say that. Yeah, don't say that. <laughs> just back in Job 14. Uh, and 11. As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dried up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Oh, mm -hmm. oh that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou mm -hmm. must keep me secret and right. So what do you mean? Hide him in the grave to keep him secret. Meaning he go up uh, is appointed unto man to what? Die once, then the judgment. So now when he died as you know that man, or you die who you are, you're gonna get the judgment. Meaning, all right, you gonna you gonna be in the heavens in your spiritual body. That's when you're in secret that you gotta. Have the understanding to know, to know that, man. Go ahead. Okay. And going back to Isaiah 57, that that death actually preserves you from the Lord's wrath. You're already in the spirit right. world in the day of the Lord. It says, when the wrath, hide me in the grave, keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. There's a That's whole right. lot of wrath coming, man. You got it. Man. You want to say something? <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. You got to finish it up. Okay. Go on, go on. Until you thy... don't finish it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. That's when he call your spirit back. 
to you to the earth. He called your spirit out of the spirit world from your earthly, I mean your spiritual tabernacle that that they, uh, I mean that Paul went into in Second Corinthians five. All right, into what a fleshly body, and to, that's where you got us right now. That's how we able to say we got our judgment. Brothers came down in 1993, you know, born on a day, March 3rd, 93. They had to come back down to flesh, man. So they was what? They had a set time in the heavens to where they had to be appointed, made of flesh and blood, through a woman and a man, all right, conceived in the womb, bones grew in the womb, and they came out of a woman nine months later, man. And that's yeah. another entrance appointed to life, man. And it's funny too. It's funny too how the Lord do it. You have a set. You have a set point in time in His life, in the in the flesh and the body. Then you have a set point in time in the, in the spirit too. In the spirit, yeah. I'm talking about in the spirit to wake up. Because to wake up too. Wake okay. up. The Lord yep. wakes you up at whatever time. It's been 1990, 1990, 1982. You might have woke up. Yeah, continuing in the world. You might have woke up in 2007, 2010, 2012, 14. Yeah. In the spirit also you have a point in time to wake up too as a you are 25 year old man but in the spirit you're actually a one-year-old man a two-year-old five-year-old how many years you've been in the truth so it's, it's a it's a double-edged sword man it's just, it's all spiritual too man you know and we have we have uh men that begot us in the word man why does it say that all right we have we have uh spiritual teachers man that we honor and we uh we give double honors to man, all right? This thing is—it's it's all the, the most I covered all, all categories across the board, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, you got a little more on what? Yeah, yeah, some more meat on it though. Come on. Verse fourteen: If a man die, shall he live again? Question mark. <laughs> hmm. All you the should. days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Right. To his time, all right. To the Lord, change him from the spirit world to the flesh, from the flesh back to the spirit. World. Like you say, the Lord locking his judgment into a rain. And when you look at that, all right, judgment is the way you measure every fucking thing. So the Lord measure everything like into a rain, the beginning to the last, the last back to the beginning, back to the front, front to the back. All right, that's why there's no new thing under the sun. Everything you saying is a recycling of things. <laughs> You see things coming. You have been there before. That's why you say your grandma say, man, that, that, that man got to It's like he been there before or something like, because he has been. Yes. Yeah. Because he has been multiple times. You know, yeah. and what? Different reincarnations. You got it. I'm, I'm holding that, uh, that Ecclesiastes 1, which you just quoted. You got it. I can bring that out. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 1. I'm going to start at 4. And this is one of my, my favorite, uh, you know, precepts. Because you know it, it paints a picture of a, a reoccurring cycle, uh, and this is okay. Ecclesiastes one and four: one generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abide forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and has it to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north; it whirleth about continually. And the wind returneth again according to his circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So they are powerful the most high is, man. That's come. right. The most high, the most high, man. It made it, oh man, it just made the point right there about the, the waters and the rivers flow, but they don't flow over, you come. know. The most yeah. high uh, 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 all all things within this planet, invisible things you can see. That's how powerful. That's how powerful our power is, man. But you got you got numbskulls out here that say there is no power. We got the atheists and all these other goddamn bug outs out here, man. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, it tells you in Jeremiah, the most high actually stops the ocean, like right at the sea, like he. The, the water's strong enough to just take over the land, but the most high said, Look, you, you stop right here, there's gonna be a beach right here. So, yeah, it just stops the ocean. Like, yeah, nobody know it. it could clearly come past where it's at. Like, if you look the way that it's made by the yeah. water, yeah, 
and you look at all the pressure of the water from way how far the water is out, how deep it is, mm -hmm. you can see it can just overflow everything. It can clearly overflow everything, but it don't go past the bounds that the Lord put at it. Like mm -hmm. you can't go past this. It overthrow itself. It says the waves throw itself, but it can't what? It just can't disrespect the word of the Lord, man. You know, mm -hmm. the waters is chest chastised by the word by the word of the Lord. Yeah. The Lord chastised the waters, man. He said, though they raw, they can't overthrow themselves. Yeah. 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 yeah, and we know the most high already flooded the earth once. There's more than enough water on the earth to just yeah. cover everything. But he's that's the right. reason it hasn't. He said he wouldn't do it again. He promised, but he's gonna flood this place with fire. But that's another lesson. You you got it up. Keep going. You you got Son it. Uh, Song of the three holy children. All things. Uh, all things. Okay as well. Okay as well, man. They mm -hmm. even blessed the Most High, man. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I got I got one more verse, but if I could also mention on that that verse seven, that all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. That's probably to me the most vivid, you know, in interpretation that you could have. Because what happens? The water runs down to the ocean, it uh it rises up into the clouds, and it rains. It's a constant cycle of the water coming down where the earth will never be, you know, full with water, like you're saying. The water will won't overtake the land because it's a constant cycle of the water going through. You did yeah, that, that happens. That uh, happens. <laughs> the uh, waters the mind. In a sense, too, man. Going back into Peter, we we live in the water, all right? Yes, this is the water. Yeah, around the earth is the water. Then you know it, we can go on and on. You know, waters. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, the waters within the waters. It's your mind that happens, man. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and just just to get this last verse, this is uh, Ecclesiastes jumping to what you just mentioned, uh, Kaya. Ecclesiastes one and nine: the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Yeah, it can't. Uh, the cycle can't be broken. Huh. That's why we get it. All right, there's a certain cycle that's in place that the Lord have set up. Like it says, the sun rises and then it go back to its place. There's no way the sun could. The sun ain't gonna miss a day to rise, and it, there's no day that the sun not gonna put, come up at a set point in time, and then it don't come back, or it, yeah. you know. And even with that, the Lord have did that to show, like, I'm the one that can stop the time. Or the Raiders of the sun, he did it multiple times. He let the sun stay up longer than it was supposed to with Joshua. He did it multiple times, man. The day, right? I think, I think uh, yeah. it the day stayed still, the sun, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because Joshua prayed so that he could defeat the enemies. He let the sun stay up, though. Yeah. Go ahead. Because in a sense, every day, every day itself, in, a, in, a, in another sense, it's a spirit, man. Yeah, it right? excels the other. Yep. Yeah. That, you know, that, I, you know, go ahead, brother. I, I was going to say, uh, but think about it. If, if, if he did make it to where the sun did not rise one day or, or the same like that, then he said that the Lord will have to cast off his people, according to Jeremiah. Yeah. And that's right. I'm a, let, me, let, me, let me put a proper precept in that real quick on what we're talking about. It's like you say, you know, we don't want to just be just saying it, you know, get, get the fund of, you know, the fundamental understanding. This is Rock 33 and 7. It says, why do, do if one day excel another when as all the light of every day in the year is of the sun? All right. Hey, and the days, the other days excelling the other day. All right. But all the days of the year is as the sun. It says. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished, and he altered seasons and feasts. So the Lord distinguished it, gave everything in his place, man, and like, look, all right, son, you're going to come up at a set point of time, then you're going to go down so the moon could come out. And, that, bro, it haven't been a day where the sun and the moon didn't come out. Huh? It may have been that you, you look at the sky, hey, the moon ain't out the day. You bugged out, partner. It, it came. You can best believe. Are that uh, uh, basically, you know, you're basically saying, well, the Lord ain't put the moon and the sun out today. Man, you notice what you're saying? You know, like that, that's not even feasible. The Lord, I would dis distinguish they going up and they coming down, which that says that is precepts for that. 
You know, it got a set up point in time. Even the sun and the moon got set up point in times. So what make you think man wouldn't have it? All right? That's the ordinance. Okay? Man is mixed in with the ordinance, man. Okay? You got it. Um, I'm a wide bro. Come. And that's, again, going back to uh, Edris, how, you know, he likened his judgment onto a ring. There's a constant, just a cycle. Of, they call it the cycle of life. That's what we deal with, man. Death is not the end of it. That's just, you know, the end of your story on this side. But we know the days of, of Israel are innumerable. You have a, a story that's eternal in the heavens. And this is just one part of that story. Even brothers, we talk all the time about how we're in the second book of Acts. We're in the second second Acts. There's going to be in the kingdom, we're going to read about all our different carnations, our time here, our time there, the Syrian captivity, Babylonian captivity. This is just one part of our story. It's not the, the end of anything. It's just a, a story that we're playing out for prophecy's sake. You, you had a point, Goliath? You want to say something? Yeah, I had a little pre for you. Huh. It's, um, it's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto Yahweh who gave it. <clears throat> I right, just basically recap and everything that we, we just said. And Yahweh give, give the spirit. He sent the spirit on earth to dwell in the earthly tabernacles. Then you die at your, your, your set point of time. And then the dust return back to the earth. And your spirit go back to who sent it. Who, which is who? Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? God, and that's plain, man. The, the plain. dust being the elements in your body that return to the earth, which is where we come from. All right, our bodies, our earthly tabernacles, and our spirit goes back to receive that judgment. Kabar, if you can get a uh, Psalms 104 and uh, start at 29, and it, that, that cycle takes place so that prophecy can be fulfilled so that we could receive our judgment and our reward. You have brothers that are going to receive rewards for our works on this side because we did works back in Rome. We followed the Messiah. You have brothers that are going to receive their reward because they walk with Moses instead of them wicked niggas, the murmurers back in Egypt. You have you have righteous men that have done righteous works in various multiple generations, and you have to come exactly. back to receive that reward. You have to come back to see your your maker, like Job said in Job nineteen. I'm gonna when I'm raised up, I'm gonna see my power in the flesh. I'm gonna see. Exactly. Yeah. You, you got men. Who, you got it. And you got men who walk righteous in every reincarnation, man. Right? Yeah, that's right. You see, every reincarnation, man, and the and the law for those men that I just saw. They're worthy to have a crown on the head, man. <laughs> they walk righteous in every generation they came, man. God. And you, you looking at the men. Abba Rakazai, you brothers can be those men, man. Some of those men. Yeah, well, we yeah. are. We pray that we are, man. You know, we believe we are, you know, but we don't see. You see, if you walk in righteous now, because you standing in your lot in your last days right here, you probably walk righteous, man. You probably was a righteous man, you know. But we don't leave that up to the Lord because we can't call that shot. All right, at the end of the day. But I'm a rock out. We all, you got it, got it, man. All right, this is a uh, this is a uh, Sirach forty four and one. It says, "Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begot us. The Lord has wrought great glory by them through His great power from the beginning." such as did bear rule in their kingdoms men renowned with their power giving counsels by their understanding and declaring prophecies leaders of the people by their counsels and by their knowledge of learning meat for the people wise and eloquent in their instructions such as found out musical tunes and recited verses of writings rich men uh, furnished with abilities living peacefully in their habitations, all these were honored in their generations, and were the glory and were the glory of their times. These these be of them that have left a name behind them, and their praise might be reported. All right, uh, well, well, all right. I'm almost, I'm almost. It says in some, and it says some there be have have no uh, memorial who are perished as though they were never been and come and said and are become as though they never been born and their children after them 
All right, I'm gonna stop right here, but it says, but these were merciful men whose righteousness has not been forgotten. So let me back up. I'm a wide. What you talking about? I yeah. And as you keep going, it says, uh, you know, their their seed shall remain forever. You're gonna have a perpetual name in Israel if you serve the Lord, if you're of the elect. And again, that that extends on to those that are of the household of faith, not necessarily prophets, but those that believe on Yahweh Shai through the word of the prophets. All right, Yahweh Shai pray for them too in St. John the seventeenth chapter. But um, Kabar, if you got that that Psalms one hundred and four. Uh, what verse? Uh, twenty nine and thirty. As uh, Psalm 104, verse uh, 29. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Right, going back to Job 14, it says in Job 14, hide me in the grave, keep me secret. And in Psalms 104, it says they are troubled, the Most High takes away their breath, and he hides, he hides thy face. He basically puts them in a situation where they're hid from the destruction, they're hid from certain calamities, and they don't have to go through certain certain prophecies that we prophesy. You know, the, the famines, the plague, the, ples the pestilence, they don't have to deal with that in the spirit world. Nobody's starving in the spiritual realm, worried about the price of food going up. You're at rest. Keep going. Thou sinners for their, thy spirit, they are, cre they are created, and thou renewest th the face of the earth. Right. Thou renewest the face of the earth. The Most High renews the face of the earth by bringing those same spirits back down and he puts them in the dust again. That same, you know, potassium, magnesium, all the things in your bones, all the things that are in the in the soil and the earth. Those are the same things in our body. We're we're made of the earth. That's what the word Adam means of the ground. Adama. We're, we're he told the Adam that. It's yeah. a lock, your brother. He told Adam that he said of the dust thou uh, came it, so the dust shall thou return. Back yeah. in Genesis, man. Huh? From yeah. the, when he said about the sweat of his brow, God, God. or whatever, some thorns and thistles or whatever, whatnot, you got it. I just want to add that's lucky for bro. Yeah, and we're we're living that. We're living everything the Most High told Adam. You know, we got to work, we got to toil the land, we got to go through all these things. But guess what? He also told Adam, and the scriptures speak about that second Adam coming, that's doing away with sin. You know, but through uh through one Adam, we all we all fall, but through that second Adam, we're all gonna be made righteous. We're all gonna be holy. Our whole nation is gonna be perfect through Adam, man. Which is your house shot if you could receive it? Uh, you can get back in that second Corinthians. Come verse seven, it says, For we walk not by Salakia, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that everyone may receive the things done in his holy body, according to that he had done, whether it be good or bad. Right. So, again, you're going to be given a reward every time you come on the earth and you fear the Lord, you walk in the spirit, you walk in obedience to the Most High and his son. You're going to receive reward for the things done in your body. Why? Because under... The sun is the place of judgment, as the brother read. That's You're right. going to receive your reward on earth the same way you receive your judgment on earth. So those that serve the Lord, they're going to be given a reward. You're going to be, again, you're going to get a, a hundredfold back everything that you lose. You're going to receive that on earth. You're going to enjoy your family. Everybody you lose on this side, there's really no no loss. Let's get back to that, that Thessalonians. It's going to tell you. Come on. Uh, verse 14. Come on. Keep going. Read all the way down. Come on. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14. For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will the Most High bring with him. Khan, it says, if we believe, that's a key word right there. If we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose, rose again, the resurrection is, that's the cornerstone of our faith. If you don't believe in a power that can raise a man from the, the so-called dead, how can you believe that he's going to raise a nation? From the, the dead state that we're in right now. How can you believe in, in any of the prophecies? We we actually worship the only power that can reward you after death. He could raise you from the grave. He could keep your spirit in the spiritual realm to hide you from judgment and then bring you back in a chariot, as it's gonna say. Keep going. Uh verse 15. 
For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Most High. And the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Right. The dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. They're already going to be on the chariot. Those men that, that stood stiffly for the name, if they become martyrs or if they, they die in some strange calamity, uh, if, if anything happens to them, they're already... They, Listen, it tells you in Romans 8 that nothing can separate us from the love of, the, of Yahweh, which is in Yahweh Shai. That includes death. Death can't even separate us from the love of the Lord. That's that's how powerful this is. Keep going. Uh, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right. Brothers know that those clouds are chariots, so-called UFOs that are just making themselves known right now. They're, they're clearly sending us a message that we're about to get out of here. They, every time we, we go into WhatsApp, this is brothers seeing chariots. Now it's on the new, you got mainstream news talking about, we don't know what this is. We called, you know, NASA, they don't know what it is. We call this person, they don't know what it is. The heathen are freaking out, man, because those clouds are making themselves known. And who's in those clouds? Our brothers. Keep going. Uh, verse 18, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Right, comfort one another with these words. The Holy Scriptures is known as what? The Comforter. We're comforted. We're comforted by knowing what's going to happen, who we are, where we come from. The Most High gave us our heritage back. He gave us an understanding of all things, including the afterlife. These people don't have that understanding. So-called Christians, so-called Muslims, so-called woke Negroes. They don't know what happens when they go to the Spirit. We just read it. We read it in Job. We read it in, in uh, Corinthians, Hebrews. We, we know what happens. Ezra's, we, we're comforted by these words. We're comforted by Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and that knowledge that he gave us, that wisdom and knowledge. So you shouldn't be bugged out by death. If you've been in the truth for, for 10 years, five years, six months, you should you should have a, a, you should be grounded in the spirit to know that all these things are a part of prophecy. They're all a part of the Lord's movie. And if you're a man of the Lord, it's part of your movie. It's part of your story. Every man of the Lord has his own story. You know, you have family members that that believe you have family members that scoff all of which you're going to see again that's just part of your story you can't take uh, it personally that's 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 the story that the most high wrote for you uh, if i could add to you right quick I, me and cabal was just talking about it the other day this isaiah 33 and 6 wisdom and knowledge should be the stability by times mm -hmm. it's, it's something that's you know it, it may seem very simple but you know if you meditate that on that that's that's real deep of how how these scriptures and having faith in uh Bashim al Shah of how that a numb us, that a numb us to this in, entire world and everything that's happening too, what's going on. Like it's literally our stability. That's what's holding us up in these times. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Also to, uh, strength we got one seven two. Um, what? We are like one away. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 You, you gonna say something, Kalai? Uh, hey, Kai, yeah, you brought this out a while back. You know what I'm saying, um, and in Matthew 24, where it say that the, the what it say, the, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, that's that's twofold, all right? Yeah, you got the love of many shall wax cold with the wicked, you know, they're killing each other, whatever, whatever, but also with the righteous as well. It's not that we, you know, we we don't love our family, but. Like this, like we just brought out this whole lesson. We understand where you go when you die, all right? And like the brother just brought out, like Bayan just said, hey, we become more numb to these things, all right? Like, hey, it's fuck. It, it said in, in uh, Isaiah thirty three, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's a balance. When it's we look balance. at balance of things, you know the Lord. You know, not just going, he going to have you have that wax and cool of that love on both sides of the spectrum, right? Right. right? He don't, the Lord don't do nothing in that, uh, 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 false balance is abomination to the Lord. So for everything that's done, you got to look at the other side of things. And that's how you make all the judgments with everything, all right? 
no matter what it is, whether you know we bringing it out in the truth, we got to look at the balance of things. Y'all cannot say that the elder brother said it. Well, we tell y'all the bad shit. We gonna have to tell y'all the good shit too, man. Hey. Like we can't just be on here all the time, just giving you the bad news. It's good titans, all right. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's it's a balance to everything, and that's how we, you know, we, you know, fully. Uh, clear the whole spectrum of everything, man, by always understanding the balance to everything. You got to do, bro. John, that tells you in Romans that all things work to the good of them that believe. Even the so-called bad news is part of the gospel, which the word right. gospel means good news. It's good that this place is going to be destroyed. It's good that two-thirds are going to be put down, that they're not going to be uh, wicked anymore. They're not going to be scoffing anymore. These things are all, they're all good at the end of the day. Oh. Uh, if, if, if I, I could just say real quick, Kaya, Y'all brothers brought this out, you know, multiple times. You know, even though we getting cut, you dig going through these scriptures, we gonna get cut by this. But also, when we going into the night, like I said, this is something that's also gonna heal those wounds that was cut. We getting comforted yeah. right. Now. Yeah. You got it right. The wound is at a wound. You got it. Yeah. These. It's just. Uh, I'm gonna just read verse. And it, it really doesn't need to be broken down. It speaks for itself in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3. And it kind of encapsulates everything we've been talking about. No need to fear death. If that's your lot, hey, hey as long as you endure until the end like a soldier, you're going to receive that crown. And ultimately, you receive everything a hundredfold and everything's going to be put in this perfect order. This is Wisdom of Solomon 3. I'm going to start at 1. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of the Most High and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken for misery, and they're going from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. Somebody without hey, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, death is, is the worst thing going, especially a hey, suffering as a man of the Lord. We know that the, the, the majority of these people out here look at what we're doing as a foolish thing, a futile thing, not considering our works. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. As gold in the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They shall judge the nations and have dominion over the people, and their Lord shall reign forever. Come, okay. they read, uh, read verse 9. Okay, okay. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he hath care for his elect. All right, the most high care for his elect, and those that put their trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah are going to understand the truth. When I we're going to understand death. We're going to understand reincarnation. We're going to understand the chariots coming back with our brethren. And all these things are, again, part of the gospel. They all work to the good. So, again, that's why it says in Thessalonians, comfort one another with these words. We're comforted by the scriptures. This is comforting to me. You know, I've eyes comforting all you brothers that are dealing with death, all you brothers that are in the truth that, you know, we all, we all need to hear these things from time to time, man. You can know the truth, but it's still good to hear it over and over again, man. The scriptures are highly repetitive. Or they had anything else? All right. So with that, I brought to Zah, this lesson was edifying to the elect. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and Shabbat Shalom to the whole elect. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.